get fools out of kid, don't play. If there was a problem, yo, I'll solve it. Check out the hook while my DJ revolves it. Hey boys and girls, welcome back to my YouTube channel, Pass Math with Miss Passarella. I'm your favorite math teacher, Miss Passarella, and before we get started, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and tell me I'm adorable in the comments below. Today's video is I can simplify expressions into simplest radical form. This is video number one out of four videos dealing with radicals. So the first video today is going to be obviously simplest radical form. Video two will be add and subtract radicals. Video three will be multiplying radicals and video four will be divide radicals. Um, so you'll get the links eventually when I finish recording for those in the description as well as the notes for this lesson will also be in the description. All right, so before we get started um, on simplifying the radicals, it's important to know what a perfect square and its square root is. It's the same thing as a radical. So um, a square root is just the side length of a square and a perfect square is just the area of a square since all four sides are the same. So you might see it look something like this. That's why it's called squared, because when you multiply a side length by itself, you're squaring it. So to the second power is squared. So I made this chart, and I think it's super important to memorize um, your perfect squares up to like 400, because you're going to need it throughout Algebra 1 or whatever math course you're taking. It's just easier to kind of have them memorized, because you're going to need to recognize them to like factor polynomials and that kind of stuff. So just have them memorized, study them a little bit. All right, so for example, one squared is one, two squared is four, so this kind of goes back and forth this way. Um, but you can also undo it, so undoing a square is taking its square root. So for example here, um, the square root of nine is three. Um, you can also say radical nine is three, or uh, radical 16 is four. You can't though say something like this, I can't say, four squared is equal to radical 16 because if you simplify both of those sides, they're not the same thing. So for example, four squared is 16 and the square root of 16 is four or plus or minus four, whatever. All right, so that's just a chart to help you out and it's gonna we're gonna go back and forth between this chart and our notes so we can kind of figure out what numbers we're gonna use. All right, let's get started. We have to take some notes first. Um, we're gonna have to fill in the blank. So it says, factor the number under the radical. So if I look at example one, radical 32, I actually wanna split that up into two parts. Um, the first part is going to be, I wanna list all the factors and then find the largest perfect square and then split it up into the perfect square first under the radical and then um, multiplied by, just next to it, the non-perfect square. Then you're gonna simplify um, the perfect square, and so you'll have a number that's uh, like a coefficient and then a radical next to it, and let's get started with this one. So example one, um, it's radical 32. So I'm gonna go ahead and just I'm gonna be dramatic here and I'm gonna list out all the factors of 32 kind of in order as factor pairs. So we've got one and 32, uh, we've got two and 16, we've got three does not go in, um, four and eight, five does not go in, six does not go in, seven does not go in. So these are all of the factors of 32 and I wanna find um, the perfect squares that go into it. There's two of them. So four is a perfect square and so is 16, but your goal is to find the largest perfect square. So I'm gonna choose um, 16 and two as my factors and I'm just gonna split up this 32. And remember, we want the perfect square first and the perfect square is 16 and then two is the non-perfect square. If I multiply these back, 16 times two, you'll get 32. So I just kind of broke it up. Now I'm gonna take the square root of 16, which is four. And once you simplify the square root of 16 or radical 16, you can drop the radical symbol. So it'll just look something like this. Four radical two is my answer in simplest radical form. Um, if you were to plug it into your calculator, you would get some kind of decimal. So I'm just gonna kind of be dramatic with this one and show you how you could see if it's equivalent using your calculator. So I'm gonna first start off by doing the 
um, square root of 32 or radical 32. So I hit second x squared because the opposite of x squared is square root and then 32 and I'm going to get some irrational decimal. Um, so 5.65 yada yada yada. Now I'm going to go ahead and plug in the 4 radical 2 and you're going to see that you get the same exact thing. So it's just a different form of this particular number. So I'm going to say 4 second x squared 2 and I should get the same number. Yep. So that's just a way to like double check your work to make sure that um, your answer is equivalent. All right, example two. All right, this is another way to write a square root. So any number raised to the one half power is the same thing as taking the square root of something. Um, we could get into it using laws of exponents, but um, I'm not gonna do that right now. Let's just stick to the facts. I don't like seeing it as a one half power. So I'm just going to go ahead and change it to um, the square root. Um, usually, if you, you would see a number here if it was a different kind of root, for example, a cubed root. Um, so you could see a 2 here if you wanted to, but generally speaking, mathematicians, if you see a regular radical, it is just a square root. So I converted it from um, an exponent of 1 half to a radical symbol, and those things are equivalent, and I'll show you that in the calculator in a second. Um, and now I'm going to break it up into a perfect square and a non-perfect square. So we've got 1 and 50, 2 and 25, um, and that's pretty much all we need because we have a perfect square, um, which is 25. So I'm going to break it up into 25 and 2, both underneath the radical. Now I'll go ahead and simplify that 25 to 5, and my answer is 5 radical 2. I'm going to be a little dramatic and come over to the calculator and I'm going to plug in um, three different expressions so that we could see that it's equivalent. Let's start off by doing 50 to the one half power. So I'm going to do 50. Um, I'm going to raise my exponent. Now I'm going to open up a fraction. So alpha y equals is that shortcut. Um, here we go. 1 over 2. And we're going to get some like random decimal here. Um, 7.07 yada yada yada. Now I'm just going to plug in um, radical 50 so you guys can see that it's the same exact thing. So second x squared 50. Look, same exact thing. Now let's plug in the simplified um, radical form and you're going to get the same exact thing again. So I'm just kind of proving to you that all of these things are equivalent and you can use your graphing calculator to help you out with that. Oh, whoops, what am I doing here? Let me clear that one. So five, I don't know what I did. All right, let's start over. Five second x squared two. And we have, again, the same exact thing. So those are all equivalent, they're just different meanings or different ways to represent. All right. Now we should be able to kind of like breeze through it. Um, I already know that the largest perfect square factor in 72 is going to be 36. Um, I think other perfect squares go into it as well, but remember you want the biggest one. So I'm going to say 36 and 2, well radical 36, radical 2. And now I can simplify it from there. So the square root of 36 is 6, and then just leave radical 2. Um, let's say that you didn't know that 36 was the largest perfect square and you thought something else was. Like, let's say you did um, 16. Oh, I'm sorry, 18. Nope, 9. Sorry, just kidding. Let's say you did 9. So 72 divided by 9 is 8. I don't know why I did that. Um, so we're doing this an alternative method. So let's say that you broke it up into radical 9, radical 8. You'd still get the same answer. Um, there is another perfect square hidden inside of 8. So watch what would happen if you didn't start with the largest perfect square. I would get 3 radical 8, which is still technically equivalent, but it's not in lowest terms. So I'm going to simplify the 8 again and I'm going to break that up into radical 4, radical 2, because 4 is a perfect square. 
So 3, radical 4, radical 2. Then we have 3 times the square root of 4 is 2. Radical 2. So again, look, I have 6 radical 2. So it didn't matter that um, I didn't pick the largest perfect square. As long as you would know that there's another hidden perfect square within the 8, you're good and you can keep going. It's kind of like if you had um, 50 over 100 and then... Um, you reduced it and you had to keep reducing it until you got to one half. All right, next set. Um, we are going to simplify radical expressions with coefficients. So right now, um, there's just kind of like one extra step. We're going, it's going to be a coefficient. The When we break it up, you're going to leave the coefficient where it is. And a coefficient's like the number on the outside. And then it's going to be radical the perfect square um, times the non-perfect square. Um, then you're going to leave the coefficient on the outside. To follow the same steps, and then at the very end, you're just going to multiply the um, coefficient to the other coefficient. You'll see. I know some of you like written steps, so, so I put it there. All right, so I'm going to break this up, leave the 6 on the outside, and break up 80 um, into a perfect square and a non-perfect square. So I'm going to do radical 16 and radical 5. I'm going to keep the 6 on the outside, take the square root of 16, which is 4, and then now I have radical 5 because that's a non-perfect square. And now I'm just going to multiply the two numbers on the outside, the coefficients, which is 6 times 4 is 24, radical 5. All right, next one. This one looks super tricky, but it's really not that bad. Again, any number raised to the 1 half power is just a square root or a radical. That 3 does not get the exponent of 1 half. So what this really looks like is the 3 on the outside a radical symbol and then 96. So that's equivalent and I would much rather work with that than the exponent. So now I don't even know what the largest perfect square is that comes out of 96. So let's find out. I'm just going to list our perfect squares here. So we've got 1 and 96, 2 and 48, 3, so 96. And 32, no perfect square yet. 4 and 24, no perfect squares yet. Well, 4 is a perfect square, but I don't think it's the largest one because these have um, perfect square factors in them as well. All right, 5, I know it's not divisible by that. Um, 6, is it? I don't know. Yep, oh, 6 and 16, so there it is. There's the largest perfect square. So if you have to go through all those steps, look, I'm a math teacher and I forget factors sometimes. I just go to my calculator and I figure it out. Keep it kind of organized. So now I'm going to break it up into three on the outside, um, the perfect square under a radical first, 16, the non-perfect square, which is 6, simplify radical 16, which is 4, so 3 times 4, radical 6, and now I've got 12 radical 6. All right, next question. Ooh, there's a negative on the outside here. Let's see how that works out. So I'm going to leave the negative 5. I'm going to break it up. And what's the largest here? We got 36, right? 36 and 2. And then the square root of 36 is 6, so negative 5 times 6, radical 2. And now I've got... Um, watch your integers here. Negative 5 times 6 is negative 30. Um, some people might want to put 1 because maybe they added or subtracted or something like that. So just be careful that you are aware of your integer rules. And if you're stressed out, use your calculator. Don't forget on your Regents exam, you get your calculator from start to finish. All right, next page. All right, this one's kind of tricky. This one has variables in it. So um, when you take the square root of a variable, you're going to kind of look at the exponents. I'm going to show you why in just a second. Um, and then all you really have to do is cut your variables in half. 
um, and then I'll show you what to do if it's an odd number. So, and I'll show, right now I'm going to show you the reason why you cut it in half. Let's say I had um, a square, all sides the same, and I wanted to find the area. It's x times x, and then the area is x squared. And that's really because the um, product law of exponents says keep your base the same and add your exponents, and then 1 plus 1 is 2. So what if um, my side length was, let's say, x to the third, and x to the third. So now I would add those and it would be x to the sixth. So you can kind of see the pattern that you would really just divide it by two to find the square root. So I'm going to literally just find the square, or I'm just gonna cut the exponents in half. So right now the square root of x to the fourth is x squared. And the square root of x to the sixth is y to the third. I'm sorry, y to the sixth is y to the third. And there's my answer. So literally just cut your exponents in half when there's variables. So I didn't have to like split anything. Um, however, this time I'm gonna have to split something because I do see that I'm not gonna cut five and half and say two and a five, or two to the two and a half. I'm not gonna do that. So watch what I would have to do here. I'm gonna break this up into all evens and then the odd one out. So the a to the fifth I would say it's a to the fourth under a radical, and then here would be a, because a to the fourth times a to the first is a to the fifth. Now I'm gonna, since this is an even number, I'm just gonna leave it the way it is. And now I can cut those exponents in half when I drop the radical, so I've got a squared and b to the fourth times radical a. And this is simplified all the way. All right, now we've got two more examples. These ones have numbers in them as well, so it's kind of tricky. All right, I'm gonna have to break this up into perfect squares and then non-perfect squares. So the 20, I know the largest perfect square is four. So I'm gonna say four, and let's do our non-perfect squares here, five. Four times five is 20. All right, now I'm gonna break up that x to the third into x squared and x because um, x squared times x is x to the third, and then the y is to the first power, which is, you know, kind of a leftover, so that's a non-perfect square. Now I'm going to simplify all my perfect squares, and um, radical 4x squared reduces to um, just 2x, because um, the square root of 4 is 2, and the square root of x squared is x, and now I'm going to just leave the non-perfect squares exactly the way they are. You can't check this one with your calculator, unfortunately. All right, last one. All right, we've got a two on the outside here, so I'm gonna treat it just like we did, um, whoops, the ones on this page, um, and then we're gonna kind of mix in the variables. All right, so leave the two where it is. I'm gonna break this up into perfect squares and non-perfect squares. So we've got 25 is the perfect square and three is the non-perfect square. Um, a to the 10th is an even number, so I don't have to break that up. That's a perfect square, so a to the 10th. I'm gonna simplify what's in the perfect square, but bring the two down, because I'm not gonna use it yet. Square root of 25 is five. Um, the square root of a to the 10th is a to the fifth, and then the three just stays. And now I'm gonna multiply two times five is 10, a to the fifth, leave radical three, and we are all set. Um, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, tell me I'm adorable. Miss you guys so much. Bye. If there was a problem, yo, I'll solve it. Check out the hook while my DJ revolves it.